meeting of the <coughs> City Council of the Public Works Joint Conference Committee, our very last meeting ever, November 10th, 2014. And we have a moment of silence. <laughs> um, I see no members of the public here, so I imagine no one's going to say anything from the public. Uh, first item of business is uh, the minute approval of the minutes from October 20th. Uh, we'll entertain a motion. Will we approve the minutes? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Uh, I will abs No, I was here. Um, <coughs> Terry, you weren't, so you should abstain. Mm, fine. All right. I'll abstain. <coughs> uh, new business. Red pine trees. Is this you, Jim? It must be. Uh, unless someone wants to cover red pines? Sure. What do you want me to do? You, want to you know more about it than I do. Okay. Let me start. I'll start. Um, back, in, back this <coughs> fall, um, we found that there was a, a pest in the red pine trees on city watershed property in Roberts Meadow and up in the, the watersheds in other towns. So this red pine scale, um, once it's detected in red pine trees, will cause the mortality of those trees within a year or two. So it's caused us to move um, into a direction of um, trying, to, trying to develop a management strategy to deal with these because they, they pose a financial risk and a potential public safety risk to the city if we don't come up with a management strategy. Um, so we've been working with the board, we've had a couple of meetings, we had our, our uh, consultant force come in and talk about the issue. And essentially what we're uh, working on is to working with our forester to come up with a cutting plan to remove some of the red pines that are still alive so we can capture some of the value, uh, the lumber value of those pine trees. And they use some of the proceeds from from that to take down some of the trees that are dead that pose a safety hazard. Um, we've been doing um, quite a bit of outreach. We had a press release on our blog and there was a, a nice article in the Gazette um, a couple of weeks ago about this that Chad Kane wrote, a pretty accurate article about what we're trying to do. We've been on the news um, describing what the problem is and Nicole and Ned went, went on a walk this weekend that we sponsored um, with a forester to talk to people about what's happening with these red pine trees. So I wanted to put it on the agenda just to take another five or ten minutes in another venue just to make people aware of the fact that um, the city has this problem both in Roberts Meadow, which people will see because a lot of the red pines are in an the area that will be very visible off the street. And then there's also um, sort of a comparable problem up in more remote watersheds that the city owns. But um, nonetheless, that was my 10 minute spiel about that, which I'd be happy to answer questions on, uh, if there are any. So, so the financial issue is, once the trees are dead, they have no value. If we can harvest them while they're alive, we'll actually make a few bucks. Or we wait and then we just have to pay for them. So it's mm -hmm. a little bit of a time crunch. Next fall, we wouldn't be able to have this conversation. It'll be more like an expense then. I um, participated in that walk on yeah. Saturday. It was uh, right. really great to uh, get the information firsthand from Mike Mowry. Um, but one thing he did say was that there was a chance that we wouldn't break even. Um, it, was that is that accurate, mm -hmm. Ned? That just because of the cost of the logging. We have a lot of time to make Maury's contract that's being paid out of that also. So I think the board always looked at it that we'd be kind of in a net zero neighborhood, hopefully at the end of the day. We're cutting our losses. Mm -hmm. Literally. And <laughs> having watersheds isn't necessarily a, a money maker. I mean, it's a bonus if we can break even. The expenses occur anyway. And we're choosing a lot of the a lot of trees will be left. I mean, you, if you went on the walk, I'm sure they covered this. I, I, as you know, I wasn't there. The others wouldn't know this, but I wasn't there. But the uh, 
you know, the, the trees that will die and don't pose any type of risk, or the trees that are already dead and don't pose a safety risk, we're just going to let those remain as habitat. There's no need to spend any money taking them down, or if they don't pose a safety risk, there's no real need to do anything. So, trees are alive, we'll take them down to, to make some revenue, as Terry had indicated, and then we'll take down other ones that pose a risk along the road for safety, falling in the utility lines or falling in the street. Yeah, the other point that was made is we need to be conscious of our abutters. And so in some cases, you need to take the trees down so they don't fall on the abutters properly. Mm -hmm. Anything else on this? So the idea is, well, if I may, yeah, I guess one more thing. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so the idea is, before we run into a problem like we did last year, where uh, people were raising the alarm about some cutting that they could see, we're trying to make sure counselors are aware of it, you're not surprised, caught by surprise. Um, as with last year, we feel once it begins, we can readily explain why. I think it was the surprise factor that was the problem last time. So we're trying to cut it off the pass. There you go. <laughs> It's our last meeting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Get to go <laughs> <into that>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, crosswalk policy. How did that show up here? I, I thought we resolved that last time. Do we continue that? Just as a week it's never been resolved. What's that? It's never been resolved. Right, it's never been resolved. Sorry. So maybe we left it. Uh, Jasper was here. The board, BPW, has accepted the wording of the new policy, which is indicating the upside. Sidewalks. Right. Not crosswalks. Cross, crosswalks. Yeah. Not sidewalks. That's what I was thinking too. Was like crosswalk is resolved. Sidewalks are not, right? Obviously. Uh, the last meeting, Jesse, yeah. when you asked why crosswalk wasn't on the agenda, we asked right? On this yeah. Right now. So that's not resolved. Right. That's, that's not resolved. That's, 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 that's not sidewalks are. Sidewalks. So I was amazed. Sidewalks the same are resolved. Okay. <laughs> crosswalks so, are not. Whatever I said. And that's what we're on. It's crosswalks unresolved. Now, do you want to go back to Jasper? And no, 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 that was no. I think we're done with Jasper. Right? Okay. I so he's all set. The crosswalk was about the painting of the crosswalks, correct? Yes. The board issued a moratorium. We're not accepting any further apl applications for this. Uh, and it stands there. With the new change of the board's role, do, do decisions like that mm -hmm. remain in the you hands of the board, or they no, go the, back the to the board council? makes no decisions. I, if I understand that the department can make a policy, or we can make an ordinance. Okay, so mm -hmm. the department could still make a policy on the advice of the board. The board makes recommendations, right. and but they can make a re recommendation to you. Mm -hmm. You could set policy, or it could come to the council. Okay. Who decides that? Well, I mean, I, I think. You know, if councilors want to just someone to draft an ordinance, they can draft it and present it. That's how the council would do it. Okay. And they could do that, you know, a counselor or a group of counselors or with with the, the department as as a co sponsor. Or even with the board. Well, I guess they could do it with the with the board as a co sponsor, but maybe they can't anymore, I don't know. But um but it still could be co sponsored with the department, I guess. Okay. So you do have something now policy that's a moratorium. We have a moratorium policy, yes. Okay. I mean, we, we were thinking about discussing it in this committee, but I don't think it makes any point. I don't think there's any point in doing that now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, effectively, we have a recommendation of the board from the EPW. That's right. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So, if any counselors want to pick up on this, or you come up with a policy, or we will watch with. Bated breath, which is a not a good use of language. Okay, uh, the next one, obstructions of, on the sidewalks. I thought that was resolved. It the was. We're just just on the final loop on review. Okay. Because the board met on the uh, October twenty second and approved the language. Okay. 
So, so it is now a policy. It's kind of coming full circle back to you, let you know that it's been taken care of. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any other discussion on that? No. The mayor's administrative order abolishing this conference committee. Yes. <laughs> we have, yeah, I, that's what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. could take a vote of non-recommendation, but <laughs> well, I I, uh, I drafted a, a committee structure that's it's similar to some of the other council committees we had. I was explaining this last time. I think it's going to be a public works committee, but it's not going to be like this. It's not going to be where members of the BPW will meet in this fashion to discuss what the board has been dealing with and working on. It's going to be probably similar to public safety in that we'll request um, meetings with with officials from the department, um, which can which I, I don't know, I, I envision it would include, you know, Ned and Jim on a regular basis, and I envision that it wouldn't regularly um, include BPW members, but the count, you know, we could at any point. Couldn't have we have a, a blanket request that these three people show up? I mean, the we, three we, people show up, if you don't want to come, you don't have to come. I mean, could. but we could continue once we this is approved could. and say, look, it's a different structure, but hopefully we would all continue to meet. I mean, we, had, we could. Because it is very similar to some of the other sessions we have, is that there are people who come there, they don't have to show up at those meetings. Well, right. They, they don't have to show up. The council can order M any <coughs> BPW or the department or any employee of the department to show up. I mean, not that it would, but I mean, just we have that power. And um, But the way it typically works is, yeah, informally, the chair requests that certain members show up and or certain you know, employees show up from the department or members of boards, and they just do. I mean, that's just yeah. how it works practically. It's a so so we hope. Well, how long do you think it'll take to? We have to move this through the council. It has to go to ordinance. It's going to be a couple of months, right? Yeah, I I thought that I'd submit it after the second vote on the administrative order. So you would you submit? You mean the next meeting? You'd submit it after we do the vote, right? And then it'll have to go through committee. I, mean, I could do it before, just because you know, if I submit it before, it wouldn't be done going through the process till after the order came back up. Yeah, but. So there might be a month or so, maybe two months, probably a month where there'll be no meetings, and then after that, if the council adopts it, then there'll be that new committee. Terry, go to Disneyland. Cool. Well, actually, I'm going to Puerto Rico on Thursday. So <laughs> kind of like that. How long will you go? Just a week. Until we summon. Yeah, we're going to summon them back. Oh, yeah. You're breaking up. I can't, I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Can we give ourselves subpoena power? <laughs> Anything else on this? Uh, order. Okay. Any uh, any new business? I think Red Pine's the most exciting thing we've got going around here. Oh, yeah. Well, we got we did, we did get a moment. proposal back. Now, were you a little surprised at the cost of the Clement Street Bridge proposal? I just read that about two hours ago, yeah. I was kind of surprised. Shocked. Uh, Ned and I had a meeting with the uh, Bay State Neighborhood Association uh, regarding the Clement Street Bridge. And in the budget that you passed for this fiscal year, there's $50,000 to begin looking at how we can extend the life of that bridge. I think everyone pretty much agrees it'd be nice if we could keep it open. The problem is um, the state has a list of 5,000 uh, in order of importance. They have a list of the top 5,000 bridges that uh, need work or help. <laughs> Where's this one? It's a 2,370 something, I think. Um, so, and the state has not only committed all of the available money for bridge work 
at the moment, but they've also committed the next billion dollars? I guess they say years. <laughs> they, 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 billion years. It's got to be billion, right? It can't be a million, it's nothing. Yeah, it's nothing when it comes to bridges. They're spending two billion now, plus they have borrowed the next billion they anticipate getting from the federal government, and they're spending it now, which means that we're going to end, going to go into a big dry period for the next few years as far as bridge money. Mm -hmm. And um, they think it could be 10 years before the state could even begin to participate in something with that little bridge. So even if, this, if we're successful in getting state money at some point, it'll be years from now. So it's on us in the meantime. And how much was the cost of the bridge came through? To replace it or rebuild it? it? Is that what you, did you get a, a, an estimate on the cost? That would be part of the, what the Oh, that's what the 50,000. Right. We've, we've asked just for <coughs> what's the 30 year cost of ownership, what's the 50 year cost of ownership. It's doing its best to rust away. Um, I mean, it's a cute little bridge. We'd all like to keep it. If the state is going to participate it's an open question whether they'll be willing to participate in a, an effort to keep it just like it is. They, we can try, right? But they may ultimately say no. Is that correct? They may. So the only money that's out there right now is in the 2014 transportation bond bill. There's $450,000 set aside for it. But it's a matter of wrestling that out of the governor's hands and getting a check for the city to use. So we started by asking for a, a proposal to um, give us an overview, give us a, a sense of what might be a good idea, how we can extend the life. And it, it came back at the $35,000. And we were thinking that this initial look might have been quite a bit less expensive than that. At thirty-five thousand, we're not going to get any biddable documents, right? No. This is an mm -hmm. overview. It's narrative. Um, we should show that to you. You might be. Able sure. To. Yes. We'll share it with Unless you. I'm connected with a company mm -hmm. that submitted on it. Did no. Time bond submit. No. Good. I'll we'll look at it. Sure. So have we paid this company? We, we have paid them, no. but not this is their just, bid. Since there's probably no money to do any work for a long, long time, is it possible to have something like the Smith Engineering School take this as a project? I know that's not an official thing, but even as just kind of like uh, we'll get some research done on, because nothing's going to happen on this bridge anyway, right? Well, there's the money in the transportation bond bill, and so it's 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 met the first hurdle. It's a okay. it's in, in in theory it's available. Getting it released is there's a, a lot of those projects never see the light of day in that bond bill. And we have a new governor right here. He'll be a spender. Huh. Maybe we'll get up another moment of silence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is um, this is an issue where the board probably shouldn't act on this in the short time frame that we have left yeah. to make a decision. I mean, we, I mean, we have one meeting left or something. Right. Some. Yeah, I mean, but it, I think rightfully we're at the beginning of a project that ought to be dealt with in the new format and not just getting started as part of what the board, whatever we think we ought to do with it. Yeah, we, 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 we frankly imagine that this study would be much less expensive, maybe 10, 15. Would this be the kind of decision, though, that wouldn't that just become a decision that you make? This isn't something that then would come to the council. So you're going to have to make this call anyway, so right? The city was to finance. It would definitely go to council for an appropriation. But but that's the bridge where haven't we already appropriated the money for fifty thousand dollars? We already did that. The mayor's it's, approval. Right. Mayor's so you so we won't be seeing that particular piece. So it's going to be your call anyway on whether you want to do the thirty-five thousand or not, which. They'll probably go to you and say, what do you guys think, right? Even though you don't have yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's kind of the interesting, interesting stuff that's going to be a little up in the air now. I, I think that traditionally that's the sort of thing we ham and awe over. Um, by the time it gets to you people, it's just numbers. 
Nice. But this wouldn't just come. This here. wouldn't even come to us. We've already approved. This it would money. be right. It'd be hiding in budget numbers. That's part of the capital plan from for right. FY15. If the state money doesn't come through, one reason I was hoping to get a 30 or 50 year cost for the bridge is if the state money in the transportation bond bill doesn't come through, then I was hoping to be able to come back to you people with a number, $200,000 or whatever that number is, to keep that bridge alive while we wait to see what would happen in the long term. And that would, that's general funds. At some point, you've got a way. Yep. Does it make sense to keep that bridge open for X amount of money? And is that if it's if it's money that the city is planning to spend on pavement, is that the best use of that? Okay. I look forward to your decision. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want it now? Or no. Should we move on? Go ahead. Just a quick question. So the study um, will tell us how, what kind of lifespan this bridge might have if it is not touch? That's a, the kind of thing. One of the options was do nothing. And I'm sure all the and narrative on that. It will close if you do nothing. Yes. But how soon, I guess, would be the question. That is a good question. And we talked at one point about closing its trucks, but there was some problem with that. The state, Just how do we the state has to approve a no truck road. Mm -hmm. um, typically, it needs to be four to six percent truck traffic. Uh, Alex has got counters out there, and I haven't seen the data, but when we did it six years ago or seven years ago, truck traffic was only one percent, mm -hmm. small amount. So, Alicia, getting back to the closing. The problem with these studies, if we ask them to give us a number, they only have one speed. That means that engineers are under there with their micrometers and they're thinking big thoughts, they're working on it, they're trying to come up with a, an engine, something that's defensible from an engineering point of view, a number that's as accurate as they can make it. The state's inspecting the bridge every six months. I mean, it's going to close when it closes. It's hard to know what, if it's worth spending five or ten thousand dollars to get an accurate number I don't know what the, the cost might be but we ha I've learned over the years we have to be careful what we ask these reports to do for us what was the fix that was done to reopen it after it was closed the last time it was about eighty thousand dollars in construction work to be done I believe that they repaired four cords underneath the bridge that was it. And it was clear then that it was a temporary fix. Yes. Yep. Anything else? And on to our last item. Is this an update on Pulaski Park? Yeah, I think it's probably old news by now, but the city received a four hundred thousand dollar grant from the state to help fund construction yep. of the park innovation. So we're pretty excited about that. And we have a pending um, CPA grant application in front of the, uh, the CPC Commission. So they'll be making their decision I think, in, in November about sort of the, the city's matching funds to that grant. So. Good. The process is kind of opaque, the CPC process. I mean, it's hard to kick it around, there's not a lot of push and pull. The feeling at this end is we make a presentation and then you just wait. It's not like, well, could you, what could you do with this much money? Or how about if we did this? Or that, 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 mm -hmm. that part of it, that back and forth thing seems to be missing in this process. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right.